Mohammed Othman, I hope I'm uh, pronouncing that correctly, um, is a recent master's graduate from Humboldt University in political science. And now he is directing, he is a directing manager at Refugee Voice Tours and a researcher with the Berlin-based NGO um, Mnemonic. Um, I will hand it on over to Mohammed. Hello, everyone. So my name is Mohammed. I'm going to present to you my basically master's uh, project, which I titled The Impact of a Simulation Workshop on the Attitudes of German Residents Towards Syrian Refugees. It is a bit of a mouthful right there. Uh, a bit of context. Um, we, uh, I think a lot of you have heard of what was called the refugee crisis in 2015, all of the uh, reasons that led to that and how it was uh, handled in Europe. I just included here some uh, graphs to just, you can say, uh, reformulate the idea, uh, how many people came in on the span of the time that we see here from 2014, basically, till uh, 20. Uh, especially here, I'm talking about the refugee crisis that uh, people came from uh, Middle Eastern countries or North African countries. Primarily here also my focus on Syrian refugees per se. So I'm not going to go into that a lot because you know that this is a, like a huge topic on itself. But that's the motivation that led me to go into my interest in this topic. Uh, especially the reaction that we saw from uh, Europe itself and how it's dealt with the refugee crisis. Uh, and uh, the first reaction is to, to enact like different laws within the EU to limit people's movements. And then we actually saw like uh, physical fences that were up in different countries that uh, were effective in trying to shut down the, uh, or lower down the numbers of people coming into Europe. This is just a, you can say, an overview of the motivation of my research. Especially now we already uh, were uh, hearing about it right now, the rise of the far right and how that affected politics generally within all of Europe, but specifically Germany. And I've used practically the same graph here as well. Um, uh, but here I want to talk about the treatment itself, the, uh, the workshop that I'm referring to here, how that came to be, what, what it is, and what I try to do here. So practically, I, it came up as an idea with my work in an organization called Refugee Voices Tours here in Berlin. I joined that organization in 2016 and designed the workshop for 2017. It was mostly tailored to be given to like high school students or university students, which we did give it to over 400 participants. Um, uh, at a certain point, I decided to turn this workshop into my uh, uh, like study in uh, for the masters. Uh, we had thirty eight participants for throughout the whole study, so we weren't that lucky to attract that many people to uh, join the study. Let's say, uh, but just I've been talking about a workshop for a while, so let's tell you what that is. So basically, I try to tra tra transport people or transform them into this uh, uh, hypothetical future Europe where we're having a rise of the, uh, you can say, I just call them here radical uh, uh, parties, whatever radical in people's minds uh, would come up. And uh, we have this, you can say, merge of five different uh, major countries within uh, Europe, and we're going to call them the Western European Coalition. So if you hear me say WEC later, this is what I mean. And it comprises of Austria, France, Germany, Belgium, and the Netherlands. Uh, what, and this, you can say, uh, hostile or like very strong change of politics did have an, uh, you can say, a reaction from people. And then I start to show people that reaction through, uh, let's say, news articles that they see. Uh, you can say how, let's start from the first one. Yes. So this is, you can say, the first news article that people will see that we have this merger, we have this new country. Not a lot of people are happy about it. So there are people going to the streets and they're trying to resist this change. And that's phase one. 
And I've divided the workshop to four phases. So in phase two, uh, things just get a bit more intense. And those instructions even could, uh, it started to be really clear that there is uh, like an authoritarian look to what the, this new government is doing. The uh, reaction was not enough. So we started to see a mobilization of weapons. People started to actually fight the government. We have different territories. It started to really turn to like a full on civil war. And then the last phase is where we just jump into like six years into the conflict, what happens, how this changed the whole uh, landscape of the whole country. So this is like just a quick overview of how the this uh, workshop works. Um, this is basically also like an infographic that I show people after the six years, let's say the assumed six years after the conflict started, how things change. This is like the population of the, the country, uh, how many hospitals were destroyed, airstrikes. So I really try to mimic basically like a full on civil war happening within uh, this future Europe. Uh, the uh, research plan itself is basically exposing people to this workshop, uh, trying to give them uh, like uh, roles that they need to play. So like if you see here on my camera, there is this uh, envelope you see right here, which basically assigns to each person uh, a character. So technically, they're not playing themselves. They'll need to play a specific character here to try to mimic a kind of a society. And in each phase, then they'll have like a different challenge that they'll need to also play. Uh, and the challenge could be it, it would be tailored to those to the uh, to the character itself and how people will overcome that kind of challenge, how they'll deal with it and how they'll try to um, uh, overcome their situation. Uh, the, let's say the academic side of why this would make sense is to try to look into the uh, academia of perspective taking ex exercises, how that would uh, affect people's, uh, you can say, reactions to anything. And what I was not telling you from the beginning that this whole workshop is based on the Syrian conflict. So practically each phase, each news article, every character we see is based on real events and real people. And that's my treatment. The treatment with the study is to make people go through that. At the end, they'll need to answer a survey. Some people will learn that this was based on real events. Some people wouldn't. And that's the kind of treatment I'm looking at, not the workshop itself, just based on real events kind of uh, effect and how that would look like. Uh, so the survey itself, it just looks that people will go to the information page, they'll need to consent if they want to, demographics, they'll just fill that. And then uh, randomly, some people will get to learn that this is based on real events on, the, on that moment, and then they'll answer the survey or some people will learn that this is based on real events after they answer the survey. That's the difference between the treatment group and the control group. And this is the kind of what, how they'll learn that this is based on real stories. So well, the last article especially that you saw is pretty much a replica of something that was published about uh, Syria. And uh, I just basically changed the the, uh, the percentages and put it in like a European context, change Syria to Europe or WEC, something like that. Uh, and the characters themselves, they also learned that those are based on real people. So uh, here are the two examples that they will see on their screens as they uh, fill out the survey. So the variables that I was looking at, uh, at was like this uh, variable that we call outgroup hostility, which is comprised of these uh, five questions you see here, uh, just to measure how people will uh, look uh, or be hostile to an in-group or an out-group kind of dynamic. But uh, part of my interest also was to look at people's uh, 
reactions to uh, uh, like stereotypes, negative stereotypes, how they will uh, assess that. And um, this was based just on a one question on a dummy variable, uh, as, uh, answering one of those four. Uh, and that's how we'll basically assess if, you, if that person has a negative stereotype on uh, Syrian refugees or not. Uh, also about intentions, the idea is just to see if people had the treatment will have a, like, they will be further away from uh, the far right, here represented with the IFD, uh, and um, uh, if the treatment will have that effect or not, make them go a bit further even from the far right. And just at the end, also, we had do donation behavior to see if that will have any effect on people, just learning about all of these uh, new uh, e events or being within this kind of environment would people be more empathetic, let's say, or try to go uh, and donate more. At the end, I've ended up doing a regression. Uh, the, unfortunately, I did not have a significant, let's say, result to report to you. The direction of the treatment we see here is uh, close to what we expected or like in the direction we expected, but we did not have any significant uh, effect here to report uh, on that sense. Uh, I would basically uh, say that it's mostly because the, the uh, sample is quite small. We just have 38 people, but also uh, I've discussed it a bit more in details within my research that uh, we already have, uh, I would say my sample definitely was quite biased to the degree that it was difficult to detect any of that difference. Uh, if you're already sympath uh, sympathetic or empathetic towards the refugees, it's difficult to measure how more you could be. That's basically what ha happened with my